Philosophy is written in that great book, whichever lies before our eyes, I mean the universe, but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols in which it is written. This book is written in the mathematical language, and the symbols are triangles, circles and other geometrical figures, without whose help it is impossible to comprehend a single word of it. Without these, one wanders in vain through a dark labyrinth. The 17th century is an age of bitter contrast and profound transformations. The conflict between counter-reformation and reformation does not spare any aspect of social and private life, and it's in this century that a solution to this problem is finally found. It is a contrast between two incompatible worlds and two completely different ideas of life. Centuries-old balances are destroyed and a new concept of the world ardently emerges. Questioning old role models becomes the only way to propose innovative ideas, and that is the case of Galileo Galilei. The University of Padua is one of the most enlightened and open-minded cultural centres in Europe and plays a leading role in the development of modern thought. Galileo Galilei was born on February 15, 1564 in Pisa in the Duchy of Florence, Italy. He was the first of six children born to Vincenzo Galilei, a well-known musician and music theorist, and Giulia Manati. In 1583, Galileo attended the University of Pisa studying medicine. Gifted with high intelligence and talent, he soon became fascinated with many subjects, particularly mathematics and physics. While in Pisa, Galileo was exposed to the Aristotelian view of the world. Once he had finished his studies, he became a professor at the University of Pisa and then at the University of Padua, teaching geometry, mechanics and astronomy. His lessons were very entertaining and attracted large crowds of followers, further increasing his fame and his sense of mission. Galileo's ideas not only sparkled a scientific revolution, but they also initiated a large-scale revolution in human thinking. He changed the way we see the world, and more importantly, how we perceive ourselves within it. And yet, long before using the telescope, Galileo had already begun looking at the world from a different perspective. In fact, his astronomical activities began in adolescence. Galileo thought of the cosmos as an immense concept full of philosophy, astronomy and geometry. He was convinced that the direct observation of the sky would supply the answer for the questions that crowded his mind. He wrote that the thought is the most pleasing ability granted to humankind, and he chose to write in ugly Latin, a precursor of modern Italian, a language accessible to university professors, researchers and students alike. Dziesiąty na tron królewski, słońce reguluje rodziny gwiazd, które kręcą się wokół niego. Die Objektivität der Welt liegt in dem impliziten mathematischen Anteil aller Dinge, Kepler. Galileo und Kepler waren beide Kopernikanen. 
während der Kopernikanischen Revolution hatten sie einen brieflichen Kontakt und Kepler hat Galileis Entdeckungen unterstützt. Sie waren amtlich, aber auch in manchen Aspekten verschieden. Galileo hielt fest an, an nachweisbaren physikalischen äh, Gesetzen, während Kepler die elliptische Form der planetarischen Bahnen gelten machte. Zwei unterschiedliche Verstellungen, was von Isaac Newton zusammengef äh, zusammengefasst wird. Kepler beschrieb die Bewegung der Planeten in drei Gesetzen. De uitvinding van de verrekijker. In zijn traktaat Sagittarius schreef Galilei dat hem te oren was gekomen dat een Hollandse brillenmaker een kijker had uitgevonden, waarmee je perfect van verre zaken van dichtbij kon zien. De grootheid van Galilei bestaat niet uit het feit dat hij zelf een verbeterde versie bouwde van het telescoop, maar hij, dat hij een wetenschappelijk instrument had gemaakt. De Hollandse kijker werd namelijk enkel beschouwd als een bron van vermaak. Alleen Galilei beschikte over de genialiteit om zijn telescoop ter sterren helemaal te observeren. In 1581, while he was studying at the University of Pisa, Galileo began his studies on the pendulum. Through, according to the legend, he watched a suspended lamp. It was not until 1602 that Galileo made his most notable discovery about the pendulum. The period does not depend on the arc of swing, the isochronism. This sparked in Galileo the idea of a pendulum clock. The dialogue concerning the two chip word system is a book written by Galileo Galilei in 1633. This book refers to the Copernican theories focusing on a statement that the Sun is the center of the universe. At that time, such an assertion was considered a heresy, which is why in the same year Galileo Galilei was called to Rome to face the Inquisition. Galileo was found guilty of heresy for his dialogue and was sent to his home near Florence, where he was to be under house arrest for the remainder of his life. In 1638, the Inquisition allowed Galileo to move to his home in Florence so he could be closer to his doctors. In 1642, Galileo died at his home at South Florence. Dialogue concerning the two chief world system. Second day. I confess that all last night I was meditating about yesterday's materials and truly, truly I found it to contain some beautiful considerations which are novel and forceful. Still, I am much more impressed by the authority of such great authors, and in particular, you shake your head, Sagredo, like you fart at some absurdity. I merely smile, but believe me, I am hardly able to keep from laughing, because I am reminded of a situation that I witnessed not so many years ago. Perhaps you have better tell us about it. So that Simplicio would not go on thinking your murder was directed at him. I'd be glad to. Well, at a very famous doctor's house in Venice, many people came to see his studies and anatomical dissections. One day, it happened that he was explaining the origin of the nerves, about which there exists a notorious controversy between the Galenist and the peripathetic philosophers. The anatomist showed that the great chunk of nerves that goes from the brain to the neck expanded on down the spine, and that only one single strand arrived at the heart. Then he turned to a peripathetic philosopher and asked if it was at last satisfied and convinced that the nerves originated in the brain and not in the heart. The philosopher answered that he would have believed him had that Aristotle been so strongly contrary to it stating clearly that the nerves originated in the heart. <laughs> Sir, I want you to know that this dispute as to the origin of the nerve is, is by no means as subtle as someone like to think. Doubtless it will never be in the minds of such opponents. But what you say does not in the least diminish the, the absurdity of this peripathetic reply, what does no experiment or argument of other soul, but just the authority of his bare ipsy And certain gentlemen, still living and active, 
One present when a doctor or lecturer in a famous academy said that the telescope was an invention taken from Aristotle. <laughs> After fetching a text, he found a certain passage where the reason is given why stars in the sky can be seen during daytime from the bottom of a very deep well. At this point, the doctor said, here you have the well, which represents the tube, here the gross vapors, from whence the invention of glass lenses is taken. And finally, he reached the straightening by rays passing through a diaphanous medium, which is denser and darker. <laughs> In 1610, Galileo published the results of these astronomical observations in the Siderius Nuncius, a booklet marking a development in the history of astronomy and science. The loss of a privileged position of the Earth in the universe twisted the idea, sustained by the Church, that the cosmos was created in deference to man. Galileo's studies produced devastating consequences on a philosophical and religious level. Nothing could ever be the same as before. He was certainly aware that the Copernican cosmology was not in accordance with the Church and the Holy Scriptures, which attested to the geocentric conception of the universe. In fact, in 1660, he was admonished by the Sacred Inquisition, a permanent institution in the Catholic Church charged with the eradication of heresies. The Copernican preposition that the Son is the center of the universe was a heresy, false and contrary to Scripture, and Galileo was warned to revoke his theories. But Galileo persisted, and with the printing of, of dialogue concerning the two chief world systems, he was found guilty of heresy and sentenced to spend the rest of his life under house arrest. During the trial, he applied the principle of a double truth, publicly disowning his convictions, while remaining privately and intimately convinced of truth of his theories. Galileo knew that his contemporaries were not ready to accept such a radical claim as heliocentrism. The centre of the universe is the Earth, orbited by the Sun. All who think otherwise are heretics. This is it. These is what threatened to bring the pillars of the church crashing down. This would have thrown the fate of all mankind into confusion and doubt. This is an affront to God. It's a book. First day of the trial. Does Galileo recognize this as the book written by him? I almost destroyed this, but I could not look. I could not put it away. I wanted to see. I had to see. Imagine you were looking into the mind of God. What else can it be? This is his creation and I'm seeing it in a way no one has ever seen it before. That is a revelation, is it not? I don't recall there being any special hint. Is it here? Where are they then, these lies? What is false? Gentlemen, my book is a duck, a discus on ideas. But if you wish to deal with facts and substantiations, would you please show me where my mathematics is false? Yeah. If I am wrong, if all this is wrong, then what you have created is an entire cosmos of deceit. And would you please show me your observations and calculations, the one which prove your version of the universe to be right and my wrong? Galileo. If you set out to test God's design, you're going in a false and dangerous direction. I must warn you. But, Holy Father, God is no one who's really revealed in nature's actions than he is in the sacraments of the Bible. And if we can show those actions more clearly, do we not show God more clearly? No, Galileo. The universe is a divine medical, not a clockwork toy. And he walks away. He's so angry. And, and I just want to have the gate. But he won't stop walking and I can't just escape, can I? So, so I walk. A 62 year old man, barely able to put one foot in front of the other because he is shaking so much. I can feel tears. 
real tears on my face. The greatest philosopher in the Catholic world and its biggest fool. Yes, this one, truly, a work of divine wonder.